Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another testing tutorial of foundation and uh, this series is all about picking up the questions which you have asked me in order to answer over the comment and but uh, I feel that just responding to the comment theoretically will not be helpful and you may need a better understanding of such questions and thus I prepared an additional video which will be only for the Q&A like the questions which you ask and I respond to those questions. So today's question is from equivalence partition once again and the question which is asked uh, on the chat window is you are testing a machine that scores exam paper and assigned grades based on the more score achieved the grades are as follows so this is the situation provided to you and uh, the scenario says that between 1 to 49 is given with F grade and 50 to 59 is given with D 60 to 69 is given as D again 70 to 79 is equal to C 80 to 89 is B and 90 to 100 is A grade. So I think we all have been through our schools and we know about this simple and very common standards of the scenario. So we know that how a grading system works in these schools and the same way here. But the question here is customly asked by the participant and the viewer of the channel that what if I have to apply equivalence partition on this? How many test cases will I achieve? And uh, number two, if you apply boundary value analysis, then how many test cases will you achieve? To do understand that, first of all, we need to just convert this given information in a tabular form. So something like this. And here you see that we have just put the same thing into the tabular form and there are the grades are just the output. The most important thing why I think the viewer got confused with this question even after watching the tutorial is uh, should I consider anything below 1 and should I consider anything above 100? Now that's a very common thing which anyone can come up with in their mind when working with such scenarios. Now team, uh, the techniques are just not mathematical calculations. It is also an analytical approach where you need to apply your understanding and understand the scenario better to uh, analyze that what exactly uh, will be a possible outcome or input for the scenario. Now here if you know, uh, the possible score cannot be below one that is like you know zero uh, the person cannot uh, only achieve zero because even if he answers something correct probably yes we do have a possibility but zero but you will not be given as a grade for that so as per the system we do not have any class below one and again as per the system the, the scores cannot be beyond 100 because the examination is for 100 so if they've given you that scenario you don't have to think extraordinary beyond the expectations and start creating another two classes on the left and right so all you need is to just put up this information on the tabular form but does not include anything so you might come back to me and say that you did say that we have to consider something beyond yes you may go back to the tutorial I have mentioned there that you should consider something out and in but that is only where the values are possible. For example, if I say the valid input is between 18 to 30 years where years are the age of the user. Now, of course, we know someone can be younger than that and someone can be older than that. But here it clearly says that an examination is measured between 1 to 100. And so 101 will not be an input at all. It's not possible. That someone can actually check with 101 because there is no maximum marks right so that's what one thing is so here you just take these six classes and let's check how many test cases we will have as per ep so ep as per ep you take only one test from each partition thus you will have one two three four five six six test cases required for maximum coverage or minimum coverage it's just the terminology which we use in the questions to track you around so don't go for that. It's just that we are always trying to minimize the number of test cases in order to achieve maximum coverage. When it comes to BVA, let's look at the other part of it. BVA allows you to test strictly on the boundaries, but which boundaries? The valid boundaries. So all the valid boundaries must be tested inside and outside. And now if you see the test cases for boundary values for each partition which is created or I can say each boundary which is created in the table you have to test left and right of that. Now here if you see I've got five boundaries and I have 10 test cases for that. So putting it all together for as per BVA two point analysis you will have 10 test cases where the boundary values are mentioned on the top. 
49, 50, 59, 60, 69, 70, 79, 80, 89 and 90. We won't test on the other side as we do not have any boundaries there. If in case you have so, then only you will test another two test cases on each boundary. So then you will have 14. So first of all, this question is invalid because they may specify very clearly as per the latest syllabus that whether any value will be possible below that or should we also try beyond 100. So until unless they mention that, this is your answer. But now in 2018, these uh, ISTQB team take care of all these things. So what you have put here is actually a older pattern question. But as per that question, what you have asked me, this is what the answer is. EP, you will have six test cases and BVA, you will have 10 test cases. Now team, as you see that this was quite simple and logical to understand. But yes, I would like to tell you all that I'm taking extra efforts to make your queries understandable to you in a better way that do not hesitate to put your questions on the comment box. I'll put my extra time in order to give you the best answers and best responses for your queries. Just make sure that you put your queries to me and I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. So till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.